Hello boys and girls, this is Mr. Bean, and welcome back to another lesson in pre-calculus. Today we'll talk about the definition of the derivative. So exciting, we're finally going, getting into some heavy calculus here today. First off, we're going to talk about what's called the calculus controversy. Who is the father of calculus? We need a little history lesson here. We got this guy named Isaac Newton. You've heard of him before. Most likely he was born in 1643, and you've probably heard of him because you speak English. If you didn't speak English, then this is going to be a really confusing lesson. And he, because he's from England, we usually attribute calculus to this guy, Isaac Newton. But there is somebody else that is also considered a father of calculus, and that is Gottfried Leibniz. He was born only three years after uh, Newton was born, but he was from Germany. So you, you got these two guys in Europe who are both really smart mathematicians developing some new ideas and ways of working with mathematics. The controversy is that Leibniz, supposedly, he came from Germany and bloop, 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 traveled to England. And they say that, these guys who like Isaac Newton, they say that he saw one of his manuals, copied down information, and then stole his ideas and published it. And then the guys who liked Leibniz, they say that Newton saw the things that he published and then copied it himself. Most mathematicians today agree that these two guys developed calculus independently. They, they worked off of people from before them. So how is that possible? They'd never even met each other. Well, it's, it's not so surprising, actually. Curious minds often converge on the same idea. Newton and Leibniz uh, independently without knowing each other invented calculus. The relevant question is, what is it? Now, they actually approach it different ways and we're going to use their methods and strategies depending on the problem in calculus. These are the two guys that we'll mainly look back to and how they did things. But the most important thing about Leibniz and Newton is that they have some really yummy snacks named after them. That's the important thing. Okay, let's go on. Now, what is a derivative? The slope of a tangent line and the instantaneous rate of change. Get those two things written down. We will come back and refer to this over and over again, but it is very important that you think slope when you see the derivative and that you think instantaneous rate of change when you see the word derivative or looking for it. Pause if it's not down yet. Okay, sit back and just kind of watch this for a minute. I have below on this webpage, hopefully it's still on this webpage, I am going to have something similar to this where you can play around, So, but stay, stay with me here and watch what I'm about to do. We have here a little graph that I've made up, a cubic function. I'm going to plot a point here called x, comma, f of x, just x, comma, y. You don't need to draw this on your notes. I've got something for you down below on the page where you can kind of play around with this in a minute. So then what happens next? I'm going to add on some h value to the x value. So I'm going to come out here and add on some unknown h and just plot a point. It doesn't matter how far off. I'm just going to plot a point here. The distance between the x values is going to, I'm going to call it h. So what is this new coordinate point? The new coordinate point, I scribbled this part of the triangle off because it was not supposed to be there. The new coordinate point would be x plus h. Okay, think about that. If I was here at x and I added another h, then this coordinate point would have x plus h as my x value. What would the y value be? Instead of just f of x, it would be f of x plus h because this is the new x value that I am plugging in right here to that function. All right, so there's our two coordinate points. So what about getting the slope between these? The slope is the difference of the y values. So I take this y value here and this y value here and I subtract them. And then I take this x value here and I take this x value here and I subtract them. You know that. Slope is just rise over run. So let me show you how this is going to work now. We take the slope here on top. We took the y2 minus y1. And then on bottom, why did it simplify to just h? Because I had an x plus h for the bottom, and then I subtracted an x for this other x coordinate point, and then that simplified down just to the h. All right, so here is the slope of what is called the secant line. A secant line is the line that just connects two points across on the graph. What we're going to do is take this thing here and actually manipulate it. Let me uh, get, make sure I have the right tool. And I'm going to take this h value and move it closer and closer and closer. So the idea is, if I could get this other point to be really, really, really close to the original first point, then I'm my secant line, see here, my red dash secant line, would become the tangent line. It's going to get really close to the tangent. And I could zoom in here and see that this would be the slope 
of the tangent line, and the slope of a tangent line is the derivative. Okay, so let me do that again. So I have here some h. I'm moving down. In fact, watch this. Oh, you'll see it. Here's my tangent line, the green line. So if that's the tangent line, I'm going to move this secant line and get it really, really close to the tangent line. You can see here the h value is a 0.28, and it's getting closer and closer. The slope's negative 1.38. Ooh, look at that. The h is almost a 0. If I can make the h really close to 0, then I'm pretty much going to have the right answer. I'm going to drag up the correct answer here. The correct answer is the slope of the tangent at that x f of x is negative 1.41. So the closer I am to 0, the more accurate it would be. If I could get it right on 0, let's see if I can get it. Sometimes I can, sometimes, oh, there it was. If I can get it right on 0, it is nothing. In fact, look, the red dashed line disappeared because you can't have it exactly there. So the slope of the green line is the derivative. The slope of the tangent line is the derivative at that given point. So let's do this. If I move this green line up like this, see how the green line is almost 0 there? Here, let's move it down here. If I can get it to be almost 0, it's almost flat. Oh, so close to 0. So it's, if I could get this right there at the minimum point, the slope would be 0. And if I dragged the secant line down and made h approach 0, then I would get the same slope. There you go. All right, you can pause the video if you want. Look down at the bottom, and you can play around with that graph down there to see. You could, in the meantime, you could also write down the definition of the derivative, which is this thing. So that is the definition of the derivative, which is really just the change in y. Let me think through this. What we did is it's just the change in y divided by the change in x, delta y over delta x. That is the derivative. And we have the distance between the two points approaching 0. Okay, so get this written down if you don't have it yet. If you want to pause and play around, you can input different functions on that, that uh, graph that's down below as well and just play around with that. Let's do our first example. So if we find the derivative, the first thing is going to be that we're going to write this weird f prime thing. We'll talk about the prime notation in just uh, after we do this couple examples here. f prime equals the limit as h approaches 0. Now we're going to plug in the information from the definition of the derivative. So what was it again? We do f of x plus h first, and then we subtract f of x. So we're going to take this thing, and we're going to plug in anywhere where you see an x, we're going to make our parentheses minus 4. Oh, I need more room. You better be writing smaller than I am. Uh, then we have. I'm going to write this in red so you can see it very clearly. x plus h. It's got to go inside here where there's an x. And then x plus h. Again, it needs to go right inside here wherever there's an x that exists. And then we subtract, in parentheses, entire whatever f of x was. So negative x squared plus 2x minus 4. I'm going to shrink this down and make this a little easier to to see all over h. OK, that's better. All right, now, this becomes exactly like your lesson from last time, where we just simplified limits. So I will do it the long ways here and just make sure you can see what we're doing. And the pain is, to be accurate on this, you're supposed to show this notation. So the derivative is the limit as h approaches 0 of blah, 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 blah. Let's do this. We have a negative in front. Then we get x squared plus 2 hx. I'll keep writing here. If you did really well on the last lesson, this part hopefully will make this really easy. Let's distribute the 2x plus 2h minus 4. Let's speed up. Plus x squared minus 2x. I'm distributing the negative here. Just make sure you distribute that negative. Plus 4 all over h. Distribute the negative here. You can start combining some things, and you should see this is going to start to clean up a bit. So equals the limit as h approaches 0 of, all right, the negative distributes, and then I start to cancel some things. So uh, in fact, I'm going to just get rid of that negative there. I'll put a negative there, a negative here, and a negative there just to help make this a little easier. And negative x squared and x squared, those two things are going to cancel, cancel. 
what else cancels? This 2x, canceling with the minus 2x. This minus 4 cancels with the plus 4. So what do I have left? Um, I've got the negative 2hx, I have a minus h squared, and I have a plus 2h. Those are the things that I have left here. So I'm going to write negative 2hx minus h squared plus 2h all over h. And then I get, next line down, factor out the h. Okay, I'm going to skip a step here because you've seen this in the last lesson. So we get the limit as h approaches 0. We factor out the h and cancel it. And then you'll have negative 2x minus h plus 2. So the derivative is f of prime of x equals 0 gets plugged into the h's and it's negative 2x plus 2. There we go. That is our derivative. Well, what in the world does that do for us? What the derivative does is it gives us an equation in which you can now find the slope of the tangent line. You'll see what I mean here. Well, let's do this. This f of 1 and f prime of 1. On your graph, I want you to put this on there. Voila. There we go. f of 1 equals negative 3. So just plot this point, and this is something that's very basic. You've done this. x equals 1, y equals negative 3 is just a coordinate point. So we put a negative 3 down inside there, negative 3. All right, what about this f prime of 1? That means what is the slope at the exact point of x equals 1. What we do is we plug this into here. So you just take f prime of 1, and then that's going to equal negative 2. You plug the 1 in, plus 2, and we're going to get negative 2 plus 2 is 0. So the slope of this thing at the x value of 1 is 0. Let me show you what I'm meaning here. There you go. There's a picture. I probably should have done a dashed line, but that line in red there is representative of the tangent line, and you can see the slope of that is 0. That's the derivative. Let's do number two next. Why don't you pause the video now, try this one on your own, find the derivative equation, which is going to give you the slope of all the tangent lines, and then you can plug in 5 and find the y value, and you plug in 5 to the derivative and find the slope right there. And I'll have the answer appear in just a moment. And there's your answer to number two. We have 1 over 2 square root of x minus 1. Then you plug in the 2 or the 5 and to get the y value right there. The, the y value is a 2. And then if we plug a 5 into the derivative, you, derivative you get 1 fourth, which means the slope of the tangent line is 1 fourth. And you can count that out. Rise of 1. And if we go 1, 2, 3, 4 over 4, you can see there there's a 1 over 4 for the tangent line. Now this part, if you had questions on this part, that means you might not have fully understood how to do the last lesson, which was multiplying top and bottom by the conjugate in order to cancel out these square roots. So you can kind of take a look what I did there and see if that makes any sense. If not, star this problem so you can get some help from your teacher to make sure you understand it. Next up, notation. We're almost done here. Notation, we usually use two times in high school calculus. Now, there's lots of other types of notation, notation, but we have this thing named after a guy named Lagrange and then our, our German hero, Leibniz. We use a lot of the Leibniz notation as well as Lagrange. So these are the two main ones. And you say this f prime of x. That's the one you'll see a lot. Or, or we could just say y prime. So if you had a y equals equation, then its derivative would be y prime. Uh, you could also say with Leibniz notation, dy dx. And this comes in very, very handy for a lot of the things that we'll be doing. And uh, if we had y equals equation, then its derivative, we would say dy dx. You don't need to say dy over dx. You just say dy dx. You could also say this one. Uh, this also means the derivative of y. And this one also means the derivative of f of x with respect to x. OK. So now the last thing on the lesson is equations of the tangent line. So we figured out how to get the slope. Now we're actually going to do an equation. Let's start off really easy. What I've already given to you here is a coordinate point. This means 3 comma negative 1. You just have to understand that information. And here we have that if x is a 3, then the slope of the tangent line is going to be 4. The slope, remember? f prime is slope of the tangent line. So we can either use point slope form, or you can use y equals mx plus b, slope intercept form, whichever one's more convenient for you. While many students at this point in calculus aren't as familiar with point slope form, it really is a lot easier. Watch this. y plus 1, see we're just taking the x and the y, and we plug it into the x and the y, equals, and then I take the slope, which is the derivative, 4, 
and then x minus 3. So the x goes into this x1, and the y goes into the y1. If this was a free response problem in calculus, this is good enough. We could stop right there. In fact, on the answer sheet, it'll show that. But we could also solve for y if, if we wanted it to be in mx plus b form. Get 4x minus 12, subtract the 1. I gotta be careful. Sometimes I make mistakes on things like this, and uh, sorry about that. Okay, there we go, 4x. So either of these answers would be sufficient. It just depends on what the directions say. So that one would work, because that is an equation. It doesn't say which form to put it in. And then that one works as well. So you'll see both answers on our answer key for this. And it just depends on the directions and what we're asking to do. All right, next one. Last one, and we're all finished. And that is, find an equation of the tangent line at x equals 3 again, but this time we only have the equations. So what information do we need? We need to get a coordinate point, an x and a y coordinate point, and we need to get the slope. So we have an x, so we're good there but we need the y value. That just means you plug the 3 right inside here to the x. So we're going to get negative 1 ninth, plug the 3 cubed, 3 cubed, plus 2 times 3, plus 10. Simplify this, 3 cubed, negative 1 ninth, that's 27, plus 6, plus 10. And then we get negative 3, plus 16. So 13. So... That is the y value. y is 13. Now we need dy dx. So we go... The derivative with a 3 plugged in is going to be negative 1 third, and then 3 squared plus 2. Uh, let's keep simplifying this here. We get 9, negative 1 third, times 9, plus 2, negative 3, plus 2. Negative 1. So this is the derivative. The derivative at the value of a 3 is going to equal negative 1. So the next thing is, let's move this stuff over because it's just kind of in the way. The next thing is to come up with our equation. So we say y minus the y value. The y value was a 13 equals m, which is the slope of the tangent line. That's derivative, so negative 1, times x minus 3. There we go. That answer could work for us depending on the instructions. It is an equation of a tangent line. Let's keep solving for y for the practice of it. y minus 13 equals negative x plus 3. And then add 13 to both sides and we're all done. Negative x plus 16. And then that one is also an equation of the tangent line which if we had a graph would probably be a little easier to graph. All right, that is it. You have finished the lesson on derivatives. Hopefully that's a little bit understanding. Don't forget you can play around with that cool applet that's there on the page below this video and rock that mastery check. And let's end with a little clip from the Big Bang Theory. Just love decorating the Christmas tree. Makes me feel like a little girl again. Sheldon, what about you? Did you have a Christmas tree? Oh, yes. 